Book TV recently visited Capitol Hill to ask members of Congress what they're reading this summer. Uh, actually, right now, I'm reading a book uh, by uh, Harvard professor Lawrence Tribe about the Roberts Court, uh, but I haven't finished that yet. But the book I just finished is actually a surprisingly good book about the 1968 election. And I, that was my coming out election. I mean, I got very involved in the 68 election with Gene McCarthy, with Bobby Kennedy, ultimately with Hubert Humphrey. It was a heartbreaking year with the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy. And Lawrence O'Donnell has done an extraordinary job, really, of recounting that very dramatic, uh, I would say, pivotal year in American politics uh, with his book called, uh, called Playing With Fire. And I, I really recommend it if you want to understand what happened in 1968, uh, especially politically. Great book. Another book, also 50 years later, about 1968, is this book called Way 1968 by uh, Mark Bowden. Uh, this is the story in graphic detail of the Tet Offensive in, uh, in February of uh, 1968, uh, but the battle for Way, the city of Way, which was uh, a peaceful, beautiful, architecturally stunning city that was utterly and completely destroyed in the Tet Offensive. And unlike other battles around Vietnam, South Vietnam, the Battle of Way lasted months. And this book is a little bit different. It's not your classic anti-war book. It's really, it really focuses on the bravery and the actions uh, of our Marines and our Army uh, in trying to fight back and win back uh, the city of Way. And very dramatic. And uh, tells it from both sides, the Viet, uh, the Viet Cong, North Vietnamese side, and the South Vietnamese American side. Uh, but it is an extraordinary retelling. And, uh, Gives you a lot of insights into how and why the United States got Vietnam so wrong. Uh, the Battle of Hue was, in many ways, uh, very uh, symptomatic of the problems we had in Vietnam at the time, and the complete denial of what was happening in Hue by William Westmoreland, who was the commander of U.S. forces in the South. A little book uh, really worth reading in the current uh, times, The Sociopath Next Door. What is it like to work with people uh, who are almost universally seen as charming, who have no moral compass, who have no sense of right or wrong, um, and uh, no empathy for other people, and tend to be extremely narcissistic. I don't know why, but this book seemed to be uh, relevant, uh, and I recommend it. Um, took up a new uh, mystery writer, a Norwegian, Joe Nesbo, uh, extraordinary writer, uh, and I want to read everything he's written, and I'm well on my way. And this was the first I wrote called The Thirst, but I highly recommend it. If you like really complex characters, uh, not your normal heroes, very flawed uh, sort of a main character who nonetheless solves crimes, uh, this is the writer, and it's very complex writing uh, and, and a joy to read. Uh, Joe Nesbo from Norway. Um, book by Nell Urban Painter called Standing at Armageddon, which is sort of the history of the progressive era in the United States. Uh, the United States kind of goes through uh, cycles in terms of progressive reforms. Uh, and this, uh, this documents that period of time. And uh, well worth uh, history well worth knowing. Uh, certainly informs us about lots of movements today. Uh, a little bit dry in its prose and not as many profiles of some of the main characters in the Progressive Era. Nonetheless, a good compendium if you want a one volume to understand what was that Progressive Era and why is it relevant today. Uh, another mystery writer I recommend that I picked up this last year is a Canadian writer, Louise Penny. She has a, a main character called Armand Gamache uh, and uh, she has uh, the same setting uh, the small Canadian uh, town, uh, and it's a really great writing, and uh, she's got a, a great flair for mysteries and character development, and uh, you know, it's, once you get into her, you want to read all of her books, and in fact, that's what I did. I read all of her books this last year. I liked them that much, and I'm going to do the same with Joe Nesbo. Um, just finished a major uh, political biography by Robert Dalek, who's a, a great American historian. Uh, and wrote a book, The Unfinished Life, uh, Life of John F. Kennedy. But he wrote a one-volume uh, biography, political biography, of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, he correctly, in my opinion, uh, puts Franklin Delano Roosevelt as one of the top three best American presidents with Washington and Lincoln. No president has faced uh, the kind of dilemma Franklin Roosevelt did in both having to 
uh, respond to the worst economic cataclysm in American history and then a sneak attack on Pearl Harbor and having to win over four years uh, a two-front war, one in the Pacific and one in the Atlantic. No one has faced that kind of challenge. Roosevelt did it with uh, great skill, uh, was a heroic figure, uh, both in his personal life and uh, his political life, and reshaped America. Um, certainly one of my heroes, and obviously one of Robert Dalek's as well. So if you want a good one volume, boy, is this uh, a, a recent uh, updated version of uh, who Franklin Delano Roosevelt was, and uh, very much worth reading. Uh, this book called The Unwinding by George Packer I really recommend to people who want to understand sort of the economic unsettlement that produced Donald Trump. Why were so many Midwest, Rust Belt, industrialized uh, cities of the past, why were they so upset? The, the hollowing out, the impact on human lives, the extraordinary stress caused by the loss of a job and the economic dislocation for the whole family is brilliantly uh, uh, recounted in this book, The Unwinding, uh, and he highlights a number of places, including Youngstown, Ohio, for example. And uh, you, you can't not read this book and not understand the forces, the economic forces that led to the political forces that led to the election outcome of 2016. I really recommend this book. Um, this book called This Gulf of Fire is the story of the earthquake and tsunami that uh, hit Lisbon, Portugal. A lot of people forget this period of history. It was not that long ago. It was in the 18th century, late 18th century, and uh, there was an earthquake that devastated Lisbon, and then it was followed by a tsunami uh, from the Mediterranean that kind of destroyed the rest of the city. Um, and this is the account of, of that, uh, that great uh, event by Mark Molesky. Um, really well done. A uh, piece of history that just gets overlooked all the time, uh, but it's uh, worth reminding ourselves that uh, this kind of disaster obviously can change the course of human history. And certainly in our own lifetime, we saw the impact of uh, both earthquakes and tsunamis uh, in the Asia Pacific region. This uh, book by Amor Tolls called A Gentleman in Moscow was one of my favorite novels uh, read in the last year. It is brilliant. It's the story of a man, um, a, uh, a noble man, very cultured, who was condemned by uh, a Soviet court in the early part of the Soviet Union in the 1920s to spend the rest of his life in exile in a hotel in Moscow. And this is the story of all of those decades of, of what happens to him and how he lives his life. And it is just a joy to read. Uh, and uh, I'm now in the midst of reading uh, The Rules of Civility, his other book. Uh, but this is a gem. And I think it's going to go down in the fictional history uh, as, as one of the best pieces of modern fiction in a long time. Um, if there is a book about the war in the Pacific during World War II, that is not only approachable, but I think brilliant. And I could not put it down. And it's a trilogy, part of a trilogy. Uh, Ian Toll's book, The Conquering Tide, uh, and its predecessor, the Pacific, uh, part of the Pacific War trilogy, he takes us through Pearl Harbor, through Midway, uh, the most decisive battle probably of the Pacific in terms of turning the war, and then 42 to 44, the island hopping campaign from Guadalcanal, Tarawa, all the way to Okinawa. Brilliant writing. I mean, I couldn't put it down. <coughs> I would say the best history of the Pacific I've ever seen or ever touched. I highly recommend Ian Toll uh, for part of your summer reading. Just great. Gordon Wood, great American historian, has written a lot about the American Revolution, wrote a book called Friends Divided about the famous friendship and rivalry of John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, uh, one of the most famous pairings in American history. They were very close. They were in Paris and uh, together as, uh, as uh, dignitaries, uh, ambassadors for the United, early uh, burgeoning United States, colonial United States, and then, of course, became rivals for the presidency, ran against each other got very bitter in the election of 1800, and they didn't talk or communicate for a number of years. Then they resumed uh, their correspondence through uh, the intercession of Benjamin Rush, 
one of the founders of America and a, a physician in Philadelphia. And, uh, and that blossomed into an enduring friendship until they died. And they both died on July 4th, 1826, within hours of each other, one of the great, great coincidences of American history. Uh, and this is that story. And it's really a joy to read. Uh, and there are a lot of tidbits here about their personalities and what made them tick. And both of them being admirable figures and both of them having flaws. Gordon Wood does a great job of uh, describing both. And then the final book I wanted to uh, uh, highlight, although actually there's one more I didn't bring, and that's called The Three Lives of James Madison by Noah Fellman. And this is sort of the, the, the stages of James Madison's evolution as a political figure. Uh, and um, he... He ended up being a very different kind of man than he began in the revolutionary period and definitely his role in the Constitution. Um, people think of James Madison, for example, as a small government. Uh, we don't want that big central government uh, encroaching. Nothing could be further from the truth. When he was writing the Constitution and when he defended it in the Federalist Papers, he actually wanted the Congress of the United States to have a veto over state legislative legislation. Can you imagine that? Uh, <clears throat> he actually favored a strong, much stronger central government. It was only later when we actually started to have a stronger central government once the Constitution was implemented that he kind of fell back on the Jefferson point of view about it all. But that's not how he started. He was a strong ally and went even further than uh, uh, Alexander Hamilton in his philosophy of government. So great read, great book, well done. And finally... I uh, can't end the year without recommending uh, Walter Isaacson's uh, biography of the life of um, Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci. A great book, uh, fascinating work. Uh, we like to think a lot of um, Da Vinci as this towering figure in art and sculpture, and he was. But what was interesting about Da Vinci was he kind of got bored and he'd pick up projects and end them and not finish them. And he left behind a lot of unfinished products. Uh, and which must have frustrated his clientele no end, but I don't think he cared. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, a, a, an intellect of endless curiosity, which is what drove his art um, and his science, and a man way ahead of his time in many ways, especially in scientific endeavor. He was curious about everything. Uh, and that is a biography that's just kind of a must on your list. You've got to read Isaacson's biography of Da Vinci. And that, uh, that was my year. Book TV wants to know what you're reading. Send us your summer reading list at Book TV on Twitter, Instagram, or on Facebook. Book TV on C-SPAN 2, television for serious readers.